And finally, here are some ideas. Color sorter, it can help you sort your bricks. A mobile robot that can guide people. A robot pet. A remote controlled surgical robot arm. Then a t-shirt folding robot. This anti-collision scanner head. Fall detection wearable system. A balancing robot that can balance on two wheels. A power claw. And finally, a power exoskeleton. Hi everyone and welcome to my tech talk about making prototypes for medical applications using Lego. I am Daniele Benedettelli, uh, also known as Professor Briggs, Professor Mattoncini. I am an automation engineer, so that's my background studies, and I'm known worldwide for my Lego Mindstorms robotics creations. I live in Italy, in Tuscany, and here I work as a freelance Lego designer, and I teach robotics in high school. Let's first see as an overview what this talk will be about. First, we will review a list of some existing machines and devices for medical applications. Then we will see how it is possible to use LEGO Robotics toolkits to develop some prototypes or proof of concept in a small scale that still work like the real machines will work. And I hope this talk will inspire you, as inspired me, to invent something new. There are some special sensors inside your smartphone or a tablet, for example, that are called accelerometers. Accelerometers are tiny devices that can measure how they are oriented in space because they measure the intensity of the gravity. It's like a force that pulls you towards the center of Earth. By using these sensors, some researchers thought of a way of detecting the fall of an elderly before it happens. Most of the time, well, it could happen because a leg breaks and then they fall, or they might lose balance. This system can also be used in rehabilitation. So this system is uh, put inside the waste pouch of this, of this guy here. By analyzing this graph, you can tell when the fall is starting to happen. By knowing that, it is possible, for example, to call for help Besides detecting the falling, um, research uh, developed a way to prevent the fall. So putting some gyroscopes, which are very fast spinning disks, changing the orientation of the, of the axis, this system inside a backpack can prevent the person who is wearing the backpack from falling. This is a very nice investigation from the engineering point of view, but, but as I told you before, most of the time, People fall because a leg breaks or something happened to the bones. So a backpack like this might not be enough to save them from falling. This is a completely different application, which is a chest compressor machine. Usually this kind of resuscitation maneuver is performed by hand, but sometimes when it takes a lot of time to resuscitate the person who had a heart attack, for example, we need a machine to do the same. So you can see that in this case, the machine is performing the same maneuver that a human mm, would make with his own hands. This is a less, let's say, an urgent procedure. We can use robots to massage people. Well, you might be wondering if it is safe for humans to be massaged by robots. What if the robot gets mad and, you know, tries to attack the human, but don't worry. These kind of robot arms were designed to be intrinsically safe for human-robot interaction. They measure continuously the force and torques that they are exerting on the bodies they are touching, so humans are safe, can relax and enjoy the massage. And these robots can also learn from the experience how to improve the, the procedure to accommodate for the tastes of the user. Another important useful application is uh, a machine that could sort and organize the medicines, the pills, for uh, an elderly who might need to take a lot of them. To avoid getting confused, we can have a machine that sorts the pills by color, by type. In this case, we have um, a Lego bird that can recognize bricks by color and sort them into the right nest according to the color itself. So a color sorting machine built with Lego can be built in many, many different ways. 
in this case the the shape of the bird is, is because it's playful this robot can understand can be trained to learn how to sort by color or can be programmed to be an expert sorter so with lego spike prime you can also implement some machine learning algorithm to understand how ai well it is hard but because the possibilities are endless but the, the 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 entry point to understand this field of computer science is easy to understand so the floor is low and the ceiling is very high so here you can see myself because i made this robot training the the bird and the bird tries to sort the, the bricks by attempts by trials and i say yes or no to let, him under, let the robot understand when it did something correctly. At the end, the robot is completely trained and can sort the bricks correctly in their nests. And here you go, the robot is completely trained and for, from now on, the, the sorting will be correct. What if we have to deliver the medicine to a, a patient? Um, a team of researchers developed a proof of concept with a mobile robot built again with Lego Mindstorms that can navigate an environment, finding the patient, and then delivers the pill in the form of a Lego red bowl. Another way to assist elderly people is having a machine that can perform some actions uh, for them. For example, this machine, as much simpler than others we've seen till now, can help people folding t-shirts, and I can assure it's much more precise than I am in doing that. We could use, again, the gyro sensor, in this case is that gray box on the video over there, attached to a finger to remote control a robot claw by mimicking the gesture measured on the end. I did something similar here on a Lego pick and place robot. In this case, the gyro sensor is built inside the, the that yellow controller there and by moving and changing the rotation of the controller in the air I can control the movement of the robot to pick and place that yellow brick on the two stations. You might ask how this relates to medical application. Well, there are surgical robots that work just like this. Of course, they are much more precise, but they can reproduce the movements of the surgeon on the patient using robot arms and this robot can be in the same room as the surgeon or many kilometers away. So telesurgery is a reality, it already exists. For example, you have the Da Vinci robots being used all over the world to make very precise surgery on patients using robot arms so they're, they don't shake, they don't make errors. Surgeon can increase his capabilities by having this, let's say, robot colleague that helps him to perform surgery with a precision which was impossible before. I made a similar experiment years ago, and you can spot by the length of my hair and by the fact that this video is quite blurry, that I build a telemetry suit. It's, a, it's an exoskeleton, uh, well, not a proper exoskeleton, in the fact that it is not powered, but it just measures the angles of my shoulders and the elbow and sends the movement data to the robot that then replicates it. So it's what uh, happens with the surgical robots that help surgeons to translate their movement into very precise, much more precise than this, um, to uh, perform surgery on a patient which is right besides the surgeon or even miles away from him. This exoskeleton is powered. So it, it takes the experiment one step further using a lot of Lego controllers and motors to make an exoskeleton that can help, let's say, uh, the hip and knee joints. The problem is that Lego motors are not that powerful. So this again is a proof of concept which might not be, well, strong enough to lift and support the whole body of a person. Yet, very interesting experiment showing you that it is possible to build sci-fi things in your room or in your garage. 
This kit instead has built a power arm with a just one degree of freedom just for the elbow for his grandma to help her lift strong weights. Well, you see that there is a motor which, uh, which actuates a string that pulls up the whole uh, forearm. In this case, it's remote controlled, but imagine you could add um, a controller that would allow the user to control the, the exoskeleton on, on her own. This is lovely. You have Paro, is a seal robot pet that can help elderly people, people with mental illnesses or dementia to, to recover a bit of their emotions because they can cuddle and pet it and relate to it as it were if it were a real animal. You might ask why not using a real animal? Well, because in some cases it could be harmful for the animal being, well, you know, treated with not enough care by people who does not who do not realize the amount of force they're using or could react in weird ways. So it's a safe way to also to monitor how people interact with the robot because the robot itself is full of sensors. It has a camera hidden inside the head and you can see how this old woman is relating to the to the robot as if it were a puppy. This robot can monitor and help uh, elderly people and visually impaired people. The user can send a command to the robot and the robot will either monitor the position of the elderly and then navigate using GPS to help the patient navigate an unknown environment. Like, just like a guide dog would do, but in this case it's a robot. A group of students won a prize with this project, which is using a combination of Raspberry Pi, Lego Mindstorms, Alexa, Amazon Voice Service to monitor when a person is falling on the ground and without any training the robot can go there, understand the emotions and the state of the, pe of the person just by looking at the face. You see it's trying to guess if it's happy or scared or sad and then uses Alexa to ask if he needs help and if the person says yes or if doesn't answer at all it will trigger a web service to start a call with the synthesizer's voice to call for the family or if the family is unreachable call the 911. So we, we finished our review of many possible applications of robotics and automatic system in many medical applications. I mentioned Lego, Spike Prime, Lego Mindstorm CV3. Let's see something more in detail. So first of all, the Lego Mindstorms EV3 is now discontinued. So, well, you might have it at home. You could find it online in a used state. In any case, Lego does not produce it anymore. The latest and the currently available toolkit, robotics toolkit is a Lego Education Spike Prime. It has a microcontroller, this white hub, which has six input output ports. It is programmable in Scratch, which is a graphical language. You assemble blocks on your computer just like they were Lego bricks and that program will run on the brick or for more expert people you can use a programming language which is called MicroPython. It features a six axis gyroscope accelerometer to balance and to understand how it is oriented in space and it has a 5x5 five five light matrix display on, on it. It can communicate using USB or Bluetooth to expand your system. The motors are very precise and they have built-in rotation sensors that allow you to measure precisely how the hub of the motor is oriented in a relative and absolute way. So it has also a mark on the body of the motor that says that is the zero position and this is a new feature. Then there is a light color sensor, force sensor that lets you understand how strong are you pressing on the sensor and then a distance sensor which is this sensor that looks like it has two eyes. And well, the building system is the Lego building system. Uh, it's a combination of Lego Technic, studless without the studs, and studded building construction system. So it is the one that you are, you might be used to. And finally, here are some ideas I distilled from this research and this review of various medical applications. Color sorter, as we saw, the Lego brick sorting bird I made, 
can be a machine of any kind, maybe with many different ways that can help you sort your bricks or pills or candies according to their color. Then a mobile robot that can guide people inside environments or a mobile robot that can drive autonomously in a, an environment drawn on a mat, for example, to navigate using lines and deliver goods or medicines to the patients. Next, a robot pet. Could be a dog, a cat, a seal, turtle, your animal of choice, pet gerbil. Some robot that mimics the behavior of a real animal that you can pet and cuddle. Then, a remote controlled surgical robot arm. Something that you can control with your natural gestures to, for example, to perform some really simple surgery on Lego minifigures, I don't know. Then a t-shirt folding robot. The Lego Spike Prime has some large plates that could be used to make a, a t-shirt folding robot or something maybe that folds a napkin or, well, it can be scaled down. So as long as we have the same concept, you know that it works for you to understand and investigate the problem. Then this anti-collision scanner hat. I had the I had this idea of having uh, using the distance sensor mounting in on top of a hat that you can wear. You close your eyes. You imagine well. You put yourself in the shoes of someone who is visually impaired, and you have the scanner be your eyes. So you can navigate an environment safely because the scanner will then signal and tell you, okay, you have an obstacle in this direction, in that direction, so you can avoid hitting it. And then a full detection wearable system using the same accelerometers built in the Lego hub to understand if you're falling and maybe send a signal to someone or just make a loud beep. And then using the same sensors, a balancing robot that can balance on two wheels and can then stay upright, define gravity. Next, a power claw, some sort of wearable claw that you can wear and increase your grabbing strength or maybe uh, increase your reach and lengthen your arm. And finally, a power exoskeleton. I think, well, this is ambitious, but maybe it is possible to build at least one joint one degree of freedom, for example, the elbow, and have the system measure your intent of moving and help you increasing your strength in that direction. This concludes my talk. I hope it was inspirational for you to get new ideas, to get your Lego and start building something. Thank you for watching. Stay young, play well. Ciao.